And as our adventurers make their way into the mountains, they hear the roar and crackle of an ice creature. An elemental erupts from the mountains and attacks. Surely none can survive this encounter. Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. This week we're going to be playing with Vallejo Game Inks and transparent 3D prints to make for some nice ice effects. To really show what these game inks are capable of, I jumped onto the Lost Adventurers Kickstarter that I supported and downloaded the Ice Elemental. So to start this build, we're going to need some transparent resin. This stuff comes out relatively clear, so it's great for any kind of transparent effects. After a few hours of printing, we are left with a couple of transparent models. After a cleanup and cure, it was ready for painting. So I grabbed my Game Ink Azul Blue and I used an old brush to apply this all over the model. By using glazes or inks on these models, it helps to fill in all the tiny little layer lines and keep a nice, clear, transparent final result. Whereas if left unpainted, this clear resin would end up looking a little bit cloudy. And then adding a couple of drops of the azul blue to help add that crystalline icy look to the base. You could honestly leave it here. He looks like a nice icy crystalline beast, but I want to play around with a few extra dry brush layers to give him a little bit more opacity and maybe even some snow texture. I glued him to the base so I could use this 3D printed painting handle. It makes it much easier for me to keep my fingers out of the shot. And now for my first time using the Citadel Snow Texture Paint. This stuff was pretty interesting to work with. It clumped together but gave a really nice white puffy finish. I gave a fairly thick coat to the base and then I came in and added a few little flecks of the snow texture onto the model. I didn't add too much because I decided at this point that I wanted to add some paints and then put more of the snow on top. So I grabbed the light blue from the D&D starter set of paints. I gave a very light dry brush over a large section of the body and a little bit more of the arms, trying to keep the outer claws as shiny as possible. After I was done with the blue layer, I came in with a pure white and dry brushed this over the entire model really sort of sticking to the front and center sections of the body. Again, trying to keep the crystalline edges of the light. Oh, whoops. Well, looks like I'm going to be doing this without the stand after all. Continuing with my white dry brush and then coming in with some of the snow effects, dry brushing these quite heavily where I feel like the snow would have been caught on this icy creature. Now we better glue him back down to that base. Where did he go? And now to try and cover up the excess glue, I decided it'd be great to bust out this old Citadel snow that a mate gave me from probably 10 to 15 years ago. I jumped into this far too quickly, grabbing a few scoops and just sprinkling it all over the miniature. I definitely should have paid more attention because it was at this point I realized this wasn't small snow textures. These were white static grass pieces and I feel like they really ruined the model. So I went to town with a brush trying to remove as much as I could. Before coming back in with the Citadel snow texture, unfortunately this kind of just caught the little bits of static grass and made a awkward clump that wouldn't stick to the base. So I had to let everything dry 
and come back to it later on. Once everything was dry, I could reapply some more snow to cover up these layers. I also decided to add a bit of snow falling off the back of the beast's foot as he's running across the snowy plains. While I was here, I also added a few little extra elements of snow that had been caught on the elemental as it runs through these wastelands. And to finish him off, a little grass tuft with a pile of snow weighing it down. Now that I'm happy with the miniature, I'm going to give the base a quick clean up. I'll scrape away any of the excess snow texture that got caught on the side before coming in with a Soulstone Blue Technical Paint from Citadel. I'm going to give the entire edge of this a fairly thick coat to bring back that icy blue crystalline feeling. And there we have our Ice Elemental. With a nice snowy coat covering his icy crystalline base. These inks worked perfectly. I was worried I'd gone a little bit overboard with the dry brushing, but the base crystal underneath the other coats looks beautiful and has him ready for my snowy terrain. This little guy turned out brilliantly. The ice effects came out exactly how I had hoped and it's going to be a continued effect that I use going forward for any of these ice, snow or crystalline beasts. I'm going to be doing some more experiments with the transparent resin and this game ink by Vallejo. I think it looks amazing and across the range there is a fair few different colours to be played with. You'll be seeing a video of that later this week. Mm -hmm.